Okay, good good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, can I call this meeting of Cabinet into session, please? In the absence of um, uh, Leader and Deputy Leader, may I ask for nominations for a chairperson for this meeting, please? I, I will ask, are there any other nominations? There's no need to take a vote, as there only is one. Councillor Cook, I present you as chair. Thank you very much, Mr Barrett. Uh, firstly, I'm happy to chair this meeting this evening in the absence of the Leader and the Deputy Leader. Uh, we seem a little depleted this evening on Cabinet due to these Covid times we live in. We have four members of Cabinet this evening who are having to self-isolate to protect themselves and others. This includes, of course, the Leader and the Deputy Leader. We expect the public to do the right things around the need to protect themselves and others during this pandemic, so it is right that councillors obey the same isolation rules when called upon to do so. Therefore, we are left with only two of us on Cabinet this evening, but it is also right we continue with the business of Tamworth as residents would correctly expect of us. I have liaised with Cabinet colleagues and I am comfortable I have their thoughts on the business this evening and will ensure their views are represented. Thank you very much. I'll officially open the meeting and take us to item one, which is apologies for absence. We, of course, have apologies from Councillor Jeremy Oates, Councillor Robert Pritchard, Councillor Alex Farrell and Councillor Marie Bailey. Again, all four having to self-isolate. I'll take us to item two. Uh, the minutes of the meeting held on the 17th of June 2021. Are they a correct record? And I look for a mover. It's been moved by Councillor Doyle. I am happy to second. As there are just two of us present, I'll take that as confirmation. Item three on our agenda is declarations of interest. I think we're both okay, aren't we? Excellent. Item four on our agenda is question time. I believe we have no questions from the public for this meeting. No questions, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Barrett. And item five, matters referred to Cabinet in accordance with the overview and scrutiny. I believe we have none for this meeting. None for this meeting, Chair. Thank you very much. Which point I'll take us to item six, which is the quarter four performance report. This report is, of course, the report of the Leader of the Council. I will take this report this evening. However, it is correct I probably do so, as it fell within my portfolio up until the end of the last municipal year. So if I don't know it, I should know it. Uh, members will, of course, be aware this report contains the following sections. The Corporate Project Summary, General Fund Actual Spend, Universal Credit Summary, and also within the report we find Corporate Plan Actions and Corporate Risks, Impact of Welfare Benefit Reforms on the Council, and the Medium Term Financial Strategy Health Check. Members will recall that we suspended recovery action for NNDR and Council tax during the pandemic, but it's pleasing to see that still recovery rates are holding up well. Whilst report of collection rates seem marginally behind target, income levels reduced, it is too early to know the effect of the pandemic and ultimately we will need to wait and see. There is a detailed up to date on the Council's MTFS, or basically better known as the budget, and the impacts of Covid, plus all the financial support we gratefully receive from Government in these unprecedented times. Members will need to know this is a check of how the Council is performing, both financially and against its corporate priorities, and I am comfortable with the data enclosed and our performance in these challenging times. I therefore move that we endorse the findings within the report, and I hope for a seconder. Second. It has been moved and seconded. It. Anything to add from an officer perspective? Uh, no, thank you, Chair. I think you've covered that, um, covered that adequately. There's nothing further to, uh, to add. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Barrett. In that case, I'll ask all those in favour. That is carried unanimously, thank you. I will take us to item seven, which is a sculpture trail. Again, I'm happy to cover this report in the absence of the leader of the council. The purpose of this report ceased, seeks to act to demonstrate the council's support and in principle agreement to allow a piece of public art to be installed to form part of a sculpture trail within the administrative boundary of Tamworth. For some years, the council have been working with this project team having pre previously granted permission within the castle grounds for public art to be erected. However, progress has been slow as the location proved to be far from ideal given its proximity to the ancient scheduled monument, aka of the castle. More recently, an alternative location has been identified at the junction of the cycle track and Faisley Road adjacent to Holloway, Holloway Car Park, which appears to be more suitable. 
Subject to statutory approval by necessary authorities, this location could act as a focal point within the town and enhance and bring new dimension to the council's regeneration plans, specifically in enhancing our cultural offer. The statue could act as a focal selfie point for visitors and also a clear meeting point for the castle. The spirit, as the statue is known, the team looking after it are advanced with their financing and looking for council support to further add credibility to this project. And once they have council agreement, they will begin the rest of the process, including planning permission. Cabinet is asked to note they have already consulted with highways and emergency services to ensure the proposed location is acceptable. With that in mind, it is recommended that Cabinet give its support and agreement to a piece of public art known as the Spirit of Tamworth to be installed at the location identified in the body of the report, subject to all necessary approvals being obtained by the group and receipt of an undertaking. This will be at no budgetary cost to the Council and I'm happy to move this and hope for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Bell. Anything to add from an officer perspective, Mr Barrett? Yes, thank you, Chair. I think it's just worth saying that, um, that the, the Council has actually asked that the project be completed by March 2024, so that it coincides with uh, key dates in the future High Street project, so it will act as a focal point in this part of the town. Um, very exciting project. It's been a long time in, uh, in, in planning, so hopefully this will give sufficient surety to enable uh, the funders to, uh, to gather their finances. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Barrett. Uh, obviously, credit goes out to former councillor John Garner. Uh, this statue is meant to be his gift to the town after he ceased to be mayor in 2014, and the, count the town is grateful to receive councillor Garner's effort to improve our wonderful borough. Anything to add, councillor Bell? Sure. It's been moved and it's been seconded. All those in favour? Okay. That is carried. Thank you very much. Which point I will take us to item eight, which is the capital outturn report. This report is to advise members of the final outturn of the Authority's Capital Programme for 2021, subject to audit confirmation, and to request formal approval to reprofile specific programme benefits to the 21-22 budget. Progress on this capital programme is reported quarterly to Cabinet and monitored on a monthly basis by the corporate management team. The outturn for 2021 Capital Programme identifies an underspend of around 29.9 million and against an approved budget of 39.4 million, given an actual spend of around 9.5 million. It has been requested that the 27.5 million, as detailed in Appendix B of the scheme, be reprofiled into 2022. This will result in an overall underspend of 2.3 million for the 2021 capital programme. The recommendations which I'm happy to move are as follows. Uh, receive the final outturn position for 2021 capital program as summarized. Two, approve each of the projects detailed in Appendix B, the reprofiling of the budget into the authority's capital program for 21-22, total of around 27.54 million. Happy to move that, do I have a second there? Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Anything to add from an officer perspective? No, no, nothing to add, Chair. There's a lot of detail in the appendix. Um, members have seen it on a regular basis, so no, nothing to add. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Barrett. Uh, just to obviously point out the obvious, it does seem an awful lot of the budget has been reprofiled. Uh, I'm always comfortable with reprofiling, so long as it's understood, understood why it's happened and it is the right thing to do, but also accepting in these COVID times it is difficult to get a lot of the capital programmes delivered. So. Again, I'm absolutely comfortable the officers have looked after the budgets correctly and the projects will be delivered as they need to be in the best way they can be. So thank you. I'll ask for all those in favour. Again, that is carried. Thank you. I'll take us to item nine, which is write-offs. Uh, purpose of this report is that members endorse the amount of debt written off for a period of 1st of April 2020 to 31st of March 2021 Assistant directors and heads of service are responsible for the regular review of debts and consider the need to write off and authorise where necessary appropriate write-offs in line with the corporate credit policy. This report shows the position for the last financial year. Further updates will continue to be produced on a quarterly basis. As I say every time when we receive this report, it is a statement of fact, it is housekeeping. Some debts can just simply not be recovered. Whether a business has ceased to exist or someone has passed away, there are always reasons. 
However, our wonderful revenues team still try where possible to recover every penny they can. So I'm happy to move the recommendation that members endorse the amount of debt written off for the period of 1st of April 2020 to 31st of March 2021, as seen in Appendix A to E. Happy to move. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Anything to add from an officer perspective, Mr Barrett? Uh, yeah, if I may, Chair, um, just obviously this is quarter four uh, report uh, detailing the debt written off for 2021 financial year. Uh, just to note, they're at comparable levels to the previous year, as it's really too early to see any effect of the pandemic on the, on the write-offs. In fact, the revenues team have reported a remarkable income collection performance for the 2021 year, given the current circumstances, which is 97.4% for council tax, 97.7% for business rates, and 95.8% for sundry debt. And despite pressures with working uh, from home, increasing benefit uptake, moving to telephone-based contact and putting in place considerable new government guidance around the, uh, the court process, rent arrears have also fallen uh, and with recovery le levels at 100% remain top quartile when compared with others so, in, so best in class. So some, some good news there as well. But clearly write-offs are the very exception and the very last resort for us where debt can't be collected you know, due to bankruptcy, for example. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Barrett. Uh, can I request you send on behalf of the whole of Cabinet a thank you to Mr Buckland's team for that wonderful year's work, to work in those circumstances and perform the had, and Mrs Mustafa, thank you to your teams as well for the wonderful work around rents. Thank you. It's thank good you, performance. Jeff. We'll put those in the minutes. Yes, um, please. If you thank can you. send Cabinet's thanks to all those teams. Anything to add, Councillor Doyle? No. Uh, I've moved it. Are you happy to second it? I can't remember if I did it. I'll second it. Yeah. <laughs> all those in favour? That is carried. Thank you. Okay, item 10, future of dry recycling. This report actually is mine. So a little background of where we are. Uh, members and officers will of course be aware there was a significant change in the international markets and industry around dry recycling a few years ago. Uh, countries like China and Vietnam and some others changed their internal policies basically to stop being the world's dumping ground. So it became more difficult to dispose of our recycling once it had been collected from households. It got a lot more complicated. Uh, this actually put pressures on the current contract we have with our supplier to dispose of the recycling and the processes they were having to go through got expensive. This contract unfortunately runs out in March 2022, so we're having to take decisions on how we will deliver the, the disposal of dry recycling from April 2022. We have uh, undertaken a tendering exercise which looks into all the options and many things have come back but to actually meet the needs of the market and be as green and environmentally friendly as possible while financially prudent it is felt that dual streaming would be the best approach for this council going forward. This would have to be dependent on agreeing terms with our partners in Staffordshire County Council who technically are the disposal agent for waste we are just the collection agent but we work in partnership as long as we can agree terms, it seems to be the way forward. This is not to say this is final, done and a deal. We need to ensure this is right for the people of Tamworth. Of course, we're in partnership, so the people of Litchfield as well. Work will continue to ensure we're putting the best scheme possible in place, but could lead to having a second recycling either bin or bag, where you would continue to put your cans and uh, your plastics into your blue bin, but another receptacle would be at your home to receive the card and the paper. The reason to do this is to make sure the quality of the paper on the card, <coughs> sorry, pardon me, the quality of the paper and the card is not contaminated, so it cannot be recycled. Again, this is not a political whim of this council. It is the real industry conditions around recycling that the globe internationally finds itself in these days, and we must respond accordingly. So with that in mind, I'd like to move the following recommendations. Number one, Subject to Staffordshire County Council's agreement to fund an equitable share of additional cost, the Joint Waste Service moved to a dual stream collection methodology. Option five, subject to option two, sorry, subject to recommendation two. The dual stream collections be based on a default bin for glass and cans and plastic and a bag for paper and card. In exceptional circumstances, a second receptacle may be provided. Delegate authority to enter into contract for the disposal of dual stream waste to the Chief Executive in consultation with the Portfolio Holder for Economy and Waste, subject to Recommendation 2. 
If Staffordshire County Council do not agree to fund an equitable share of the additional costs of dual stream collections, the existing commingled collection methodology are in option two to be retained and the transfer of responsibility for disposal of dry mixed recycling to be returned to Staffordshire County Council from the 1st of April 2022, subject to recommendation two. That the council recommends to council, sorry, that cabinet recommends to council to update the medium term financial strategy based on the additional financial implications of the selected option. Option five, to increase the revenue budget by 105, 179,000 pounds per annum from 22, 23, noting this to be offset by the equitable contribution from Staffordshire County Council and to include a new project in the capital programme for 21-22 for £95,600 for the provision of the necessary infrastructure, or option two, to increase the revenue budget by £36,114 per annum from 22-23. In moving recommendations one and two, I wish to clarify, in relation to the first bullet point of recommendation one, the key principles we would seek in an equitable cost share between ourselves and the County Council are as follows. There be no capping of the level of support, the sharing should be open book and reconciliation of actual costs. The costs sharing to, in, to be included all additional costs of a dual stream service including costs of transition and implementation. That there should be no modification of the current mechanism of uplifting recycling credit in line with RPI. If we are not able to agree this equitable split, we will hand back commingle disposal as detailed in the final bullet point of recommendation one. I know that's long-winded and complicated, but it is a complicated question at the moment. To basically summarise those recommendations, if we agree with the County Council a 50-50 split, open book, down the middle, then we will continue as we are, but move to a dual stream service. If we have failed to agree those terms, we will be handing the responsibility of disposing of recycling waste back to Staffordshire County Council. Uh, I'm happy to move those recommendations and seek a second that. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. And I'm pretty confident Mr Barrett would like to uh, add his thoughts. I will just add a very, very brief thought. Um, uh, that obviously, in the report, um, it does say that final approval is subject to parallel agreement to our Joint Waste Service partners at Litchfield District Council. I can report that at their Cabinet on uh, Tuesday, they um, made the same recommendation, which was accepted. Um, but no, nothing further to add to the report, Chair, a um, lot of detail in there. It has been through our scrutiny process um, and they came up with the same recommendations as, uh, as has come to Cabinet. So uh, no, nothing further to add, Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Barrett. That is indeed a fair point. Uh, this is a, a, cr a cross-party agreement through scrutiny. Uh, it's good to see us working so well with our partners, Litchfield, to ensure we're aligned and together on this and ensuring we deliver the right service to the residents of Tamworth. Anything to add, Councillor Doyle? Then it's been moved and seconded. All those in favour? That is carried, thank you. I'll take us to item 11, the Welcome Back Fund. Uh, this is the report of both the Deputy Leader and myself, but I'm happy to take it. The purpose <coughs> is to seek approval from Cabinet to implement and deliver activities that, that are eligible under the Government's European Regional Development Funded Welcome Back Fund. The Welcome Back Fund is an extension of the Reopening High Streets Safely Fund which was launched in May 2020. It is funded through European Regional Development Fund monies and as such comes with strict requirements on what the money can and cannot be spent on with highly detailed evidence requirements. Tamworth Borough Council can claim up to £67,455 from the Welcome Back Fund to deliver specific activities. The Council may also use any underspend, which is still to be calculated with the Government, expected to be around £4,000. In the original uh, RHSS, as it is called, there were four main types of activity that can still be delivered through the Welcome Back Fund. One, support to develop an action plan for safe reopening of local economies. Two, communications and public information. Three, business facing awareness raising activities. And finally, four, temporary public realm changes to ensure that reopening of local economies can be managed successfully and safely. The aim of the fund is clear in that it is focused on the following areas encouraging outdoor activity making town centres more inviting and encouraging people back to them encouraging visitors in innovative waves and beautifying i love that word beautifying spaces that are currently not deemed as attractive 
Therefore, I recommend to Cabinet this evening that Cabinet approves the proposed activities that have been developed in line with Government guidance. Cabinet supports the processes and structures put in place to deliver and administer the programme. Three, that delegated authority be given to the Assistant Director for Growth and Regeneration in consultation with myself and the Deputy Leader. I'm happy to move those three recommendations. I invite anybody to read this report. It is such good news and we have a wonderful opportunity of improving our town centre, including an augmented reality trail to improve our tourism offer and of course a deep clean of our town centre, including benches and other bits of public realm. It is a good opportunity and I really do commend this report to Cabinet. Happy to move. Councillor Gold, do I have a seconder? Yeah. That is seconded, thank you. Anything to add, Mr Barrett? Uh, n not much yet, no, I think um, it's very exciting, it's nice to get um, some money that actually has to be spent in, in targeted areas in things that, um, that need to be done, particularly looking at um, you know, the aug augmented reality uh, and the promotional campaign of coming back after Covid, which I, I think and I actually know businesses will be very um, pleased with, because it's something we need to do, we need to get people comfortable in our town centre again post-Covid, uh, so yeah, very welcome funding, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Barrett. Uh, anything to add, Councillor Doyle? No. That's been moved and it's been seconded. All those in favour? That is carried once again. At which point I'll take us to item 12, which is local development scheme and local plan timescales. Surprisingly, I'm not doing this one, Councillor Doyle, you are. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Uh, I'd like to start off by thanking uh, Richard Powell for producing the report. Unfortunately, he's not with us tonight. Uh, so I'll move on to this, the report. The purpose of this report is to seek Cabinet approval for the publication of the Tamworth Borough Council Local Development Scheme for 21, 2021 to 2024. To note the recommendations were discussed uh, before ISAG uh, last night um, and, in, and accepted by the Scrutiny Committee. In summary, Section 15 of the Planning and Compulsory Purchase Act of 2004 requires all local planning authorities to prepare and maintain a local development scheme and specifies what is to be included in it. Failure to do so uh, and to maintain the local development scheme could result in one being prepared by the Secretary of State on the Council's behalf. Tamworth's Local Development Scheme sets out the Council's programme for the preparation of the local development documents over a three year period and informs the public and other stakeholders about the dates to be involved with the plan making process. The LDS document provides the framework for the delivery of the local plan documents, the policies and proposals, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> which will impact on the three facets of sustainable development which are economic, social and environmental. The current LDS was published in 2018 and set out a work programme up to the end of 2021. While the timeline set out, is set out in the current LDS has not yet reached its conclusion, it does allow for an annual review. As the timescales for individual projects have changed sufficiently, it is considered appropriate to publish an updated version of the scheme which is contained in Appendix A. This sets out a revised time to, uh, frame for local plan development up to 2024. Most of the work programme will be delivered using existing resources within the service. However, it has been identified that consultants will be required to deliver specific projects where there is a need for specialist skills or there is a lack of capacity in-house. There is a budget identified for the local development framework and further details are contained within the report itself. So, in, rec in conclusion, the recommendation is that Cabinet approve the publication of the Tamworth Borough Council Local Development Scheme for 2021 to 2025. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Have you have any of those recommendations? I've moved it. Moved. I'm happy to second those recommendations. Anything to add from an officer perspective, Mr Barrett? No, thank you, Chair. Councillor Doyle's um, said all the salient points in there, so thank you. Still discretionary social housing relief, Chair. Thank you very much. At which point I'll fetch in Councillor Doyle. Thank you, Mr Chairman. The purpose of this report 
is for the approval and for an update to the community infrastructure levy local policies to introduce discretionary relief for qualifying social housing. In summary, the Council adopted a community infrastructure levy or SIL in August 2018 and published alongside the charging schedule several local SIL policies. The SIL regulations provide for that just that got past. The SIL regulations provide for mandatory relief from SIL in some instances, including for certain types of affordable housing. However, in some other circumstances, relief is only available at the charging authority's discretion. Discount market sales were introduced in, in the July 2018 update to the National Planning Policy Framework, but were not provided, provided mandatory relief from SIL through a corresponding change to the SIL regulations leading to a discretion discrepancy between different types of affordable housing on the same development. It is recommended that the Council make available discretionary social housing relief to bring this type of affordable housing in line with the other types already eligible for relief. The relief would need to be applied for, for by developers and their application assessed by officers in the planning team. This would be done as part of the existing administration of SIL and would not ge uh, generate any significant additional workload for the team. Offering the additional relief may reduce income from SIL, but not requiring it to be paid on some dwellings where it is otherwise might have been. However, due to the type of affordable housing being required by the National Planning Policy Framework, it is likely that developers will seek to reduce their liability through a different means or reduce the amount of affordable housing produced on site if those dwellings remain liable for the full amount of SIL. The proposed approach would therefore not result in any significant additional resource implications. So the following recommendation is that the Council make discretionary social, relief, social housing relief available from 9th of July 2021. I'd just like to add this is it provides good news for those within the borough that are looking to get on the housing uh, ladder by making more affordable properties available to them. And I move that report. Sorry, I'm happy to second that, Councillor Dahl. Anything from an officer's perspective? No, thank you, Chair. Okay. I'll ask all those in favour. That is carried, thank you. Again, I can only apologise, my laptop is frozen. If I remember correctly, item 14 is homelessness and allocations policy. Am I close, Tina? Yeah. <laughs> can I ask you to introduce it, please, Tina, because genuinely I can't access it at the moment. Yeah, no, laptop. thank you, Chair. I'm absolutely delighted to present this report on behalf of the portfolio holder for social housing and homelessness prevention. It really does, uh, Mr Chairman, represent good news. It seeks to do two things. One is to set out um, the successful award through the Rough Sleeping Initiative of £100,000 that we were allocated um, recently, um, as well as takes the opportunity to update the Council's allocations policy as there's been a range of government refresh guidance around that. Um, so just turning to the Rough Sleeping Award first, um, we were recognised by the government and through the Homelessness Advisory Support Team for our, our fantastic collaborative and partner-led approach to tackling rough sleeping across the town. Um, as, as the Chair and Cabinet will, will know, our numbers around rough sleeping are, are low, consistently less than, a, less than five. But because of the work we've done with our partners, we were invited to bid for the money. Um, and the £100,000 will go towards um, staff to support neighbourhood coaching, outreach working, uh, mental health, and also continue to support our winter relief project that we run with the Heart of Tamworth and, and others. And there will also be a town centre initiative to deter begging in the town, which is of, often mistakenly uh, taken for rough sleeping. Um, so it really does uh, represent good news. I want to place on record the thanks for our partners in supporting us in terms of providing what you know is often challenging advice and support um, to to people who are in that position. Um, the second element of the report, Mr. Chairman, details the allocations arrangements. So obviously there's been guidance um, from the government in terms of the new social housing allocations. Um, there's been um, proposals in the social housing white paper. So set out in the report is a table 
um, summarising the changes within the allocations policy. They cover four areas, um, one around eligibility arising from Brexit. Um, the existing policy doesn't currently cover settled status and obviously it will need to be updated to take into account the new scheme. Um, there's also additional provision for our armed forces, which, as you know, the Council already supports the Covenant in that area and also takes account of latest legislation around domestic abuse and contained within the new guidance. So um, the policy is attached with those changes proposed for you, Mr Chairman. So the recommendations are set out in the report. Um, the first one that Cabinet acknowledge and support the action plan to spend the £100,000 at Annex 1. Um, the second one that you delegate authority to the portfolio holder for social housing and homelessness prevention together with the Executive Director of Communities to approve further phased funding arrangements set out in that plan. Um, recommendation 3 to approve the allocations policy amendments at Annex 2 and then obviously as is our practice we've also attached to Annex 3 the equality impact assessment um, showing that we've taken a account um, of all those protected characteristics. Happy to take any questions Mr Chairman. Thank you very much Mrs Mustafa. Uh, you've lovingly read out the recommendations which saves me doing so so I'm happy to move those four recommendations on block as read out by Mrs Mustafa. See for a second now. Thank you Councillor Doyle. Um, I think I've been saying this for too many years now. Your departments are just showing off now Mrs Mustafa. I mean the results you continue to deliver are just phenomenal. Again, we've been successful in pulling some money into Tamworth, which will tackle some <coughs> a, a very serious topic, which is homelessness. In the 21st century, in reality, nobody should be sleeping on the streets, but we know it occasionally happens. We're on top of it in Tamworth. We're recognised as one of the best councils in the country on the matter. We run a Rolls-Royce service around housing, and it's pleasing to see we just continue to get better and better. So it's really not a question or a comment, just to add my thanks, Mrs Mustafa. Anything to add, Mr Barrett? Yeah, I just think for, um, for to, to be awarded £100,000 um, when our, our homelessness figures generally are, are very low is, is a credit to um, being recognised for actually looking at prevention measures rather than actually deal, just dealing with the, uh, the, the, the issue. So uh, um, really exciting stuff going on. Having the opportunity to refresh the policy with updated guidance I think is, is, is really good. And yeah, it's, it's a big thanks to, to our partners and to the team to, um, to making this happen. So yeah, it's a, it's a good news story for Tamworth, not just for the council. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr Barrett, 100% agree. Uh, I'd never want to be homeless. I'd want it to be prevented in the first place. It's absolutely the correct approach. If I don't want to be homeless and the council helping me. I don't want to be homeless in the first place. And it's absolutely the correct approach. Let's get in early intervention and stop it happening. And that, that is what Tamworth Borough Council and the people of Tamworth are about. How do we help people? Anything to add, Councillor Doyle? No. Uh, I've happily moved it. You've happily seconded it. All those in favour? That is carried. Uh, can I thank you all for your attendance this evening and leave you with this one thought. I chaired Cabinet in February this year and announced that it will be my final Cabinet meeting I would chair. Goes to show what I know. Good night, everybody.